Drew, before we begin the podcast, I just want to address, uh, when you entered here, like you, uh, or sorry, when I entered your house, uh, you pulled me to the side and said, like, um, that in your house, normally people of my kind aren't welcome here, and that, like, uh, I should be grateful in the first place that, quote, you let a butt fucker into your house, and I just want to know what that means. I'm, well, okay, so let me just start off by saying I'm very much, I endorse communication. You okay? endorse it? Yeah, clear okay. communication. I don't think you should lie to people. I think people should understand where you're at, therefore, that way, they can make their own decisions. You know, their own conclusions off of uh, your behavior. So when I said we'd accept the cat in here, I didn't know it would just, like, keep hitting the leg of the tripod. <laughs> and I know in editing that's going to show up. <laughs> we recorded all of this. You didn't hear that I farted in Drew's face? No, I heard that. Yeah, or, like, you're in the giving birth position. How do I push you out? Oh, I can feel it now. Wow. I can feel another one. Drew, Drew get is, close. It, is it coming out? This is, is it Kenny, coming out? This is Kenny versus Spenny right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm giving birth to my cat, guys. You want, you know, I want to know what I'm giving birth to, Drew. <laughs> Three, two, one. Welcome to Credit Zero. <laughs> Welcome, one and all. I have returned from my slumber. You're deaf. We gave you a eulogy last time and you came back and it's pretty disrespectful. It's... Peasant. <laughs> yeah, what's up? How's it going? What are you introducing us to, Luke? Peasant, I am introducing you to my new reign. For I have returned from so-called death as Christ has. If this is your first episode, I'm really sorry. He has risen. He is true. Uh, play the Handel. The, pl the, the choir? No, that's Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> I have risen from my slumber, and I have learned many things. Like that we're on Credit Zero, the podcast by After School Arcade? That's right. Let's introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> my, na my name's Luke, and I used to be dead. Uh, my name's Daryl, and I was always alive. My name's Drew. I have also never died. My name's Paul, a.k.a. Tweed, and I'm dead inside. <laughs> Welcome to the, the podcast. Welcome to the fine month of February mm. 2017. Yeah. <laughs> the best year of our Lord, I think we can agree. Mm. Uh, hi. Uh, we're still in a pandemic. We still don't have uh, improv shows. It's kind of difficult to do this show when we, like, don't get a lot of new uh, life experiences because we can't, like, go out and talk to people and can't do improv shows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to kind of rely on uh, traumatic stories from schoolyards and, and childhood. Oh, I've actually, yeah, I've got a couple of those. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> but before we get into, like, anything here, I just want to say, coming here, I made a huge mistake. As we discussed, I was late coming here because, like, some Darren do or whatever, what have you with my car. And so on the way here, you know that, like, double red light outside of, like, the grocery store near your place? You know how, like, yeah, one of them's yeah, at yeah. the base of, like, a hill and stuff like that? Yeah, I straight up ran a red light in front of a police officer co uh, coming here. You, and you didn't get pulled over? Yeah, that's that's the best you part. lucky duck. So what happened was, it was yellow, and I was just like, alright, I'm on a hill, I'm just gonna go through it, I know I've got enough time. This one, there was, like, a pile of dudes just going, like, nyeh, nyeh, like, they were, they just were doing the... a pile of dudes rolling around on the street. No, it's... There was there was a bunch of cars going the left turn. <laughs> a bunch of dude cars. A bunch around, of dude cars left. had being dude bros giving each other dude bro jack off moments. <laughs> they were all making left turns, so I was like, "All right, they're going to stop because it's going to hit a red light soon, and I'm going to be that asshole that does it right when it turns red." You know what I mean? And. There was another guy who had the exact same plan for the left <laughs> turn, so I, like, stopped and then kept going for some strange reason. While there was, like, a cop in, like, the perpendicular lane at the at the next fucking, like, red light looking basically at me going, like, Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, well, I was just, like, straight up, like, it was already red by the time he was there, and I was like, yep, screw it. <laughs> and I was just running the red light, and I got to the second set of red lights, and it was still red, so I pulled over, and the cop was like, look, you could see it through the windshield, he was looking at me. <laughs> and I don't know why this, I thought this would help my case, but I pointed off towards, like, the direction where that guy made the left turn, and I mouthed the words, <laughs> it was him. <laughs> <laughs> and the cop did didn't pull me over, so like... <laughs> he must have uh, believed you, I don't know. Yeah, clearly I did fucking something right. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, even when it's pandemic, I just have stupid fucking stories of me failing to do the basic things of, like, what people expect human beings to do. Yeah. I don't know, officer. It wasn't me. <laughs> the shaggy defense. Yeah. Shaggy? Me running shaggy. The red light. Like, me. I didn't know she was 16. <laughs> <laughs> Not that shaggy. Uh, uh, shaggy the sex offender? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the shaggy defense is. Shaggy the rapper. He had the song, It Wasn't Me. Oh, okay. it's, and his breakout no, 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 no. sequel song, It Was Him. <laughs> How have you been, Luke? What have you been up to? Not a lot. Just working and... and, uh, and, and Craziest work story, go. Um, people get mad at me for telling them to put their mask on, right? <laughs> Yeah, but that's, like, expected in the pandemic time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the craziest? Yeah, yeah. okay, oh, crazy. No. Was there one person who was like, it's the juice, like, when you asked them to put their head mask on? No, one guy started filming my boss, because he's like, this is a, a violation of my civil rights of putting this on Facebook. Hey, gang, just taking you behind the scenes a little bit to give you a little talking to. Don't forget, if you ever get caught by the cops for doing something you shouldn't have been doing, well, just go ahead and blame another guy in the vicinity. After all, the cop will believe you and you won't get in trouble. If you're white! Back to the regular scheduled programming. Yeah, so I don't know how much of that is not go is gonna stay in the podcast, but Paul was pulling the cat out from underneath oh, the bed. Oh, none of it. N none of this, too. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I have I have editor powers. In fact, uh, let's edit Drew to say Paul is sexy. Now say the word. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's a that's a violation of my human rights. Wait, wait. Right, Luke and random person from Costco? I don't agree with this person. <laughs> wait, wait, uh, question. Will you say that Luke is sexy? No, because you're just gonna slice it. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, I totally will. Yeah. Anyway, go on with uh, that person that was anti-Semitic filming that, your boss. That's it. Dude, if that happened, I would do the harmless shake in the video. I would just, like, run in and just be like, yeah! <laughs> the Harlem just, Shake. Yeah, <laughs> just, nullify the entire fucking video. From things from 2013. Because, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that way they'll, they'll upload and, it was, and the people are watching are just going to be like, well, this is just from 2013. I see the Harlem Shake. <laughs> this can't be about COVID. It's got to be about something else. Yeah, yeah. it's like, that'd be a weird piece of performance art that it's like, everyone's wearing masks. This has got to be current. Why are they doing the Harlem Shake? <laughs> Not to mention, like, imagine some sort of breakout, like, uh, who's a really important person but not like a figurehead of like political power? I don't know, Jeff Bezos or something like that. Yeah. If someone was filming Jeff Bezos going, I think that Yugoslavians aren't really people, right? If someone was filming that, that would be taken 100% seriously. Now picture an Amazon employee is doing the Macarena in the background. Do you think the meme-loving internet is not going to single it out just for that? Everybody's going to see that video if that's the thing. Yeah, there's going to be like pound sign Macarena man uh, trending, and he's going to get a thousand followers on Instagram. At least. <laughs> that's when you know you've hit it big, when you hit it's a thousand. thousand? Yeah. 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 That's like the fame cutoff point. I feel like point. the ratio is pretty bad there, though. Like, if everybody sees that video and only a thousand people follow him... What 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 kind of numbers do you want, then? I mean, like, if a hundred million this... people see a video and you get a thousand, that's like... That's not bad. 0.1% of people. That's a lot of percent if it's a big group of people. That's skim milk percentage. That is that's, like non-fat yeah. percentage. Yeah, that is a shame. That's well, where you say it's basically wait, zero. Wait, zero. Yeah, I was about to say, that's like, yeah, that's skim milk. I would agree <laughs> with that. Uh, Regis Philbin, really, only has 33.9k followers on Twitter. Oh, nice. Also, since I last checked, he unfollowed 30 people. <gasps> kind of a weird flex considering he's dead, but that's... <laughs> sure, dude. He's, he's liquidating <laughs> his, his assets. I no longer approve of you. Thank goodness he still follows Stephen Colbert. What do you think of Stephen Colbert? You seem like you would have a lot of opinions about him, Luke. He is alright. He's a good improviser. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Judgment. No, it's it. The reason I'm kind of like annoyed at Stephen Colbert is because he like executive produced a show called Our Cartoon President. Yeah. Which is like it's not bad. It's sort of like it's silly humor. Season three and season two are good. Season one is dog shit. <laughs> um, but working the, out some kinks. The most annoying thing about that show is that almost every voice is either a caricature or a spot on impersonation. Like the Bernie Sanders and Mitt Romney impersonation, spot on. The Joe Biden impersonation, they're taking one aspect of his personality and hyper and flighting it. It's really funny. And Stephen Colbert plays Wolf Blitzer. And, like, even with, like, Stephen Colbert, you would expect him to act. Yeah. Uh, you'd at least expect him to be like, hey, I'm Wolf Blitzer. You know, like that sort of voice. Yeah. But he just does Stephen Colbert's voice. <laughs> and it's not Wolf Blitzer. Yeah. And he doesn't even do a good job acting where he's just like, I'm saying this line. 
That's all of fucking uh, That's his Wolf Blitzer's lines. As, especially considering, like, Stephen Colbert is known in the comedy community for his character of, like, look at the endurance on this guy in his yeah. acting. It's like, <laughs> yeah, and he does fucking not... It's, it's kind of clear that, like, the show was like, well, we need to give the executive producer a role because people will point and laugh in the comments and go, like, oh, ha-ha, it's Stephen Colbert, ha-ha, as and opposed to, like, him doing a good job. And he was like, I already have so much money, I don't need to give a fuck about this acting role. Apparently, I mean, well, our cartoon show, yeah. president was, like, his baby. What do you think, Daryl? Um, I'm I can't speak to the animated version of it, but I do remember Stephen Colbert on uh, John Stewart's uh, D- Daily Show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, like 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I was a uh, when I was a young 20 year old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I and I liked his character there because it was just like he was a monotone uh, guy. He played the character of like a Republican guy who really cared about rights. No one could see that, but I love that you did air quotes before you needed to. <laughs> he played the character of a Republican. <laughs> But uh, but it was just like man, he would he would uh, say his line in the most straight face, like monotone way, and you knew it was a joke, right? It wasn't yeah. just bad acting or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I like that, and then going from that to his own show, like the Colbert Report. Like that you was... call it the Colbert Rapport. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. That's, that's what they called it. That's what he called it. Yeah, because yeah. it's because his name is actually Colbert. Yeah, are you? Is he taking the piss out of the fact that like, haha, you don't pronounce the first T, so haha, let me not pronounce the second T. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Breaking he new decided, ground. He, he just decided. Solved the case ball. You figured it out. Yeah, it's you great. did it. It's amazing. Yeah. What other jokes can we decode? <laughs> <laughs> He's a gold star. Oh, I get it. To get to the other side is the simple version, and you were expecting a punchline. <laughs> No kidding. Yeah. Um, anyway, we all learned. Yeah, so. Colbert Report was cool. Seashore sounds like seashells. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. yeah. Well, anyways, the Colbert Report it was, was like a tongue twister. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was like witty, also, and he was still like the same sort of one note. Republican kind of guy, and then he got his own like talk show, and yeah. then he became some yeah. cool, fun-loving guy. I I'm sipping my drink while I'm making fun of the president. Who oh, drinks? Yeah. Honestly, what a fucking lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and he, it's it's all at like, least gulp it, don't sip it. Yeah, and it's all very like vanilla, like political humor, like oh, oh Cheeto in chief. Drink. Yeah. Oh, Cheeto and Chief. Uh, and that that merited you saying it twice. Uh, yeah. and, then, and then the Cheeto and Chief. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Cheeto and Chief. Yeah! yeah. 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 That's, that's a good Go one. Yeah. 5.0 GPA, Ooh. baby. <laughs> Cheeto and Chief. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, it's, it's very vanilla and just like. Oh, I wish I was at brunch testi- right now. This is, a, this is a testament to our fucking Februarys, given that we're yeah. talking about a show that ended in November. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's coming back, but I also don't give a shit. I just want my fucking Februarys to be... I remember last year, fucking my birthday, you two pussied out. But Drew and I, we fucking did it right for my birthday yeah, last year. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, I missed... We saw damn fish. I, re- yeah. I regretted that as my, soon as I said no. Uh, my it birthday is in good. February. Uh, Daryl didn't regret it. He, in fact, he texted me the next day to, to go, Ha ha, I, I heard that you faggots went to see the fish. <laughs> I never use that word. <laughs> he, okay, he said dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> Ripley's Aquarium has has more than Just fish, more than but fish. it doesn't have dolphins. Okay, it doesn't have big. <laughs> I animals. thought you were gonna say it doesn't have faggots, <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna be like, not until I enter. <laughs> There's no gays in Ireland. Because <laughs> <laughs> no Saint Patty, Saint Patty drove them all out with the snakes. <laughs> anyway, There's no yeah. gays at the Ripley's Aquarium. <laughs> uh, you could probably piece it together, <laughs> listen. I'm sorry we're being so vague, but yeah, my birthday's in February, and last year Drew and I went to Ripley's Aquarium with another friend of ours, and it was a fucking baller ass time. Yeah. I'm sorry that I never invited you to like, let's do something cool for your birthday next week or something like that. I felt like a piece of shit when I found out like days later that your birthday was like on the 21st. I don't even remember what I did for my birthday last year. I think I had people over, didn't I? I feel like I had people over because it was like right before everything closed yeah. down. Yeah. So I had people over. I think I was there yeah. for that. I'm not sure. Everyone was drinking. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a good fucking time last year. This year, I just had to like sit in my room and go, man, I sure am 25 now. What a fucking like. Not only do I have to endure the uh, existential crisis that like 
forever now, I'm gonna start like slowly dying. And also my opinion is out of young adult demographic polls, but I had to do it from my fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is I did like a couple of cool things. Number one, the neighbors had fireworks and I have no fucking idea why. Like on your birthday. Yeah, it was weird. On the, on the night of my birthday, yeah. It was kind of weird too. I've heard the neighbor works do fire... Uh, the neighbor works? The na Clear. <laughs> the neighbor works do fire hood. I heard the neighbors do uh, fireworks before, but I never knew from like a which side it was because I always heard them and never saw them. And I, on a whim, looked towards like the one side I never look at and was like, oh, that's who always does the fireworks. And also got to see fireworks on my birthday. That was fucking baller. I went to a Wendy's. That was nice. Uh, weird story about the Wendy's. I don't know why I have weird stories about everywhere I fucking go. Yeah. But on my birthday, I went to the Wendy's, right? Within, I decided to go inside on a whim and not do the drive through I was like, it's my birthday. I'm gonna go inside a building. I want to be seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I went inside and I shit you not, okay? I, I promise yeah, this don't. story happened. So I went inside, right? I, I went in, there was no other fucking like people in line or anything like that. I went up to the counter and like some sort of minor fire broke out, like a grease fire or something like that. And the person at the counter, I don't know if they entered a fugue state. I don't know if they had a hard reset. They looked at the fire, looked back at me and went, all right, come on, come on, come on in. And they would motion for me to come back behind the desk. Oh. And like, you guys know me. One of my anxieties is if someone's telling me over and over, do this thing, do this thing, do this thing. I'm really, really bad at like backing out and saying like, no, what are you talking about? And acting rationally. I'm just sort of like, oh, okay, okay, sure. So like, I followed the dude behind the desk towards the fire. Reminder, I'm pyrophobic. Was he so gonna like, sacrifice you or something? <laughs> I don't know. And so, well, I do know, but I'm getting to that point. <laughs> and so he was like, come on, come on, uh, hurry up. And I was like, eventually, I got like nearish the fire and was like. In like a weird semi-panic, I turned to him and went, What do you want me to do with this? <laughs> and he looked at me as if for the first time and went, Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I thought you worked here. <laughs> 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 what? And he pushed me back behind the desk as if it was rude for me to be there in the first place. <laughs> While a fire is going on, I sit there for two minutes, watch the fire slowly go, and, he's, and he says, he doesn't even say sorry about that, can I take your order? He, he just, he... He, I'm guessing he writes a silent contract going, let's pretend this never happened, because he puts his hands on the desk and says, welcome to Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so we're not going to talk about what just happened here? Yeah. We're just going to continue on with the order? I okay, was tempted sure. to extend the bit, but the guy looked very frazzled as it was, and I didn't want to ruin his day, and I also didn't want him to yell at me and ruin my birthday, so I was just like, yep, this is yep. a thing that has happened. move on with our life. That's such a crazy experience, just like... Hey, come, come towards this fire for a second. What the hell are you doing behind the counter? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. I love, like, maybe, like, a week or two later, his, like, boss would be like, hey, come in here for a second. You know, I looked up the, the, the video here, and, you know, it's, like, totally ignoring the fire. Why did you bring this guy behind the <laughs> yeah. counter? You know that's not allowed. Yeah, I mean, from the security camera's point of view, especially if it was like in a, a pivotal spot, he probably thought that like I was his boyfriend or something like that, because we were, he was really close to me when he went, oh my god, sorry, and pushed me, and like went like, towards me to push you. me. Yeah, so it probably just looked like while a fire was going on, he was like, ooh, my boyfriend showed up at Wendy's, let's give him a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. It all depends on where the security cameras are. Uh, I am um, I react very like in the moment. I'm very like I use my improv skills in those moments like uh, like and my reaction is <laughs> so always you see, you see a fire you're like quick an object smaller than a bread box <laughs> uh, Yes, and uh, more fire uh, <laughs> an object resembling a fire extinguisher <laughs> uh, But uh, you know I react emotionally right away. I remember um, I, this was like at the end of the uh, when the, like a store was closing and I had just finished my meal so I had some plates uh, you know when there was still dining eating or whatever uh, <laughs> sorry crotch was creaking go on <laughs> um, and so uh, and so I take the plates and I put them there's no real place for me to put them and so I want to make sure that so it's easier ate them. <laughs> <laughs> so I put them a little bit behind I paid for these I put them a little bit behind the counter where the cash register is and then one of the servers was like, Hey, what are you doing? Hey, get back from there. You can't be there. You're not allowed to be there. And then I was like, 
Okay, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you actually know? say that? Yeah, I was like, I was, I was walking out with my friend. And, and, uh, you like did it straight up. I'm walking here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thing. No, I was like, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help you out. And then I walked out the door and never saw that woman again. Help you out? What, you, do you, are you like she died or something? Like you said, I'm trying to help you out. She melts into the floor like she never gave me no problems. <laughs> I made her melt with my mind. That would be cool if like someone was rude to you and cut customer service and you were just like boom be gone <laughs> and just dis- dispersed into dust yeah into a different dimension yeah well see there's Drew- a dimension full of all the people that annoyed Daryl <laughs> <laughs> that's the like 11th dimension what would that dimension look like po- t- t- tell us like who would populate that dimension yeah. okay okay we that, have, would, that would help with the pet peeves thing we were talking about we a have that too. we have that kid who I busted his head against the wall very early <laughs> so he <laughs> annoyed you <laughs> yeah. you, you busted his head against the wall and then you're like and then two another dimension. He no. annoyed you? You were like, ugh, you got blood on my wall. That's like cartoon bully level shit. He no, punched like... his head straight through the wall into another dimension. <laughs> it had like a Michael Scorsese fucking like slow motion fucking thing. Michael Scorsese. I know, I said Michael! I'm sorry. <laughs> Martin! Jeez. Uh, yeah. I knew you were gonna pick on me and I was ready to yell at you. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely... just trying to help. Definitely that guy. I mean, there's got to be, like, that area has got to be filled with mostly people that cut me off in traffic. Okay. Uh, because I swear a lot. And I also use the middle finger and, like, you know... You, you live in also, like... Fuck one of, with people. One of the, like, traffic populations of, like, fuck you world, too. Yeah. That's yeah. a sentence that just happened, yeah. Well, people understand it. I make my own sentences. Is that not the appeal of me on this fucking podcast? Yeah, Michael Scorsese. You knew what I meant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who else? Yeah, you live like... in a place where traffic is such that... Uh... <laughs> Fuck you, you know what I meant. Really? That, like, it's very... It's conducive to a lot of anger, right? Yeah. It's... Oh, oh! Now you see just <laughs> yeah. See how entertaining it was beforehand. Fuck you all. It's funny how when you use different words, we get a different meaning out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. In in Toronto, like my driving uh, Toronto gets way crazy. Toronto. Uh, if you're from Toronto, you don't say that last T. Uh, Toronto. What if I do? <laughs> Then you're not from Toronto. <laughs> I don't make the rules here. Yeah. <laughs> I've lived in Toronto for. 18 months now. See, anybody from Toronto cringes when they hear that. But I'm do they from cringe they, Toronto. Do they cringe when, they, when you say, like, Toronto? Not really. C-H-R-N-U-Y-H. What about, no, that's a very what, southern Ontario uh, way of saying it. Toronto. What about the six? That's, that's, that's just Drake. Only Drake. I, I've heard people say the six, and they're not cool. Because they want to be Drake. <laughs> that's yeah. what makes them not cool. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to be someone else, you're not cool. That's like a rule. That's a good rule. Thank you. A rule of cool. I want to be Daryl, so for the purposes of this podcast, I'm not cool. Yes. For the purpose of the... Perp- <laughs> ah! 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 Get fucked! Get fucked! Get destroyed! You can leave. You can leave your house. Can I kick you in the crotch? No! <laughs> At least you asked. Can I have your testicles? No! Yeah. Can I eat them? <laughs> can I eat- they don't have to be attached to you when I eat them. No. <laughs> I'd I rather keep like them a, attached. Can I eat them like a bowl of grapes? <laughs> a bowl of two uh, grapes. <laughs> yeah, a bowl of two grapes. Stop the vine. Things of white grapes. Oh, just dangling the scrotum over your head like a mistletoe. Just, 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 you know. Oh, that would be gross. Imagine if you could, you know, like, your mouth. you know those, like, uh, Saved by the Bell, like, stop time shits? Where, like, you can stop time and then replace objects with other objects? Yeah. How yeah. the fucking badly do you think people would react if you replaced mistletoe with scrotums? <laughs> Would they connect, be connected to a person like no, squatting? No. No. Oh. <laughs> then I'm not down. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah, people would probably be upset. Yeah. Who else is in guess. this dimension, Daryl? <laughs> oh okay, good. Uh, so Vince Vaughn. Vince uh, <laughs> Vaughn. Why? <laughs> I don't like him. Too many rom coms. Can't handle it. He's not good. He's not a good actor. He's not funny. His voice is annoying. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> He's not. I like to believe that, like, you slammed this kid's head into a wall when you were in kindergarten, and you, th- like, because Vince Vaughn was next to him, and you went for Vince Vaughn's head, missed, got the kid, slammed the kid's head into the wall, and that's why you're annoyed with the kid, because the kid got between you and Vince Vaughn. Yeah, and Vince Vaughn's like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> 
I was in Home Alone. No, I wasn't. What was okay. Vince Vaughn in? Uh, Christmas with the Cranks. Really? Who would he play? I don't. Tim know. Allen. Yeah. No, he wasn't in Christmas. No, he was not. He, he played was in, Jamie Lee Curtis. He was in Wedding, Wedding Crashers. Crashers. I haven't seen that movie. And I don't watch bad movies. He was in The Internship. I don't watch bad movies. And was true. was the internship the one with Bobby De Niro? No. Okay. He was in four Christmases, I think. He was in a, a bad Christmas. Well, I expect movie. him to have been in at least four. Yeah. He was in a season yeah. of True Detectives. True Detectives. Yeah. Oh, remember? Was he one of them? He was. <laughs> <laughs> he was a false detective. <laughs> he he was, learned aha! that on season two. I think he was the Spoiler one. Spoiler alert! Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> it was season two. I think it was the one with Mark Ruffalo. Um, oh. Welcome to the movie podcast. <laughs> and he's like, wow! That's Owen Wilson. <laughs> no, that's. Was it on the wow. podcast that I did a really good Owen Wilson impersonation? Was yeah. It, wow. 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 Yeah. Have you seen like that, that, that video? Um, I'm sure lots of people see it with the lightsabers. Wow, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Good. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good Have you one. Seen that? Wow. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. I'm just taking attendance. Speaking of last, uh, <laughs> speaking of last fucking podcast, I want to clarify something real quick that we were like talking about, and Uh-oh. I feel like didn't discuss with enough nuance. We weren't talking about like words that people use. I feel like the final word wasn't an- final enough, and I just want to say for the record, like, be sensitive to what what words imply. Like, if you want to say like the R word or the F A word, under first of all, be don't punch fucking down. Don't yeah. be. You have to. To be part of like that oppressed class to be able to say that you're reclaiming a word you can't just say you're reclaiming it on half behalf of other people and also just watch what you say around people mm-hmm. if people say i'm uncomfortable if you use that word and you use it anyways you're probably a, a dick bag you're yeah. a piece of shit yeah, yeah. I don't, for example i don't like the word queer a lot of fucking people in the lgbtqia plus 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 uh fucking i don't even think i needed to use that many pluses. Second plus here. Uh, a lot of pluses <laughs> Oh my god! They got good grades. <laughs> yeah, it's LGBTQIA plus plus. You got a good grade on that LGBTQIA test. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just don't like Came the word. Positive. I don't like the word queer, but a lot of people identify with that word. I really like the word faggot because I think it's really funny. <laughs> but a lot of people in the LGBTQ spaces don't like that, using that word, and I feel like. The types of people that we're going to attract to this podcast are the types of people that kind of like think like us. But for the record, if like we ever got like a lot of people saying, can Paul cool it using that word, I would fucking listen to them. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. the same as on my stream. I used to say that word a lot on my stream. And then like one dedicated viewer was like, hey, I was bullied a lot growing up with that word. I know I can't tone police you, but is it possible you could say that less around me? And I used it less around my streams in general because like... I don't want to make entertainment to make people feel uncomfortable. If you want to make entertainment to make people feel uncomfortable, think about why you're making fucking entertainment, you hack. Yeah. George Carlin would hate you. Yeah. He'd hate you. Yeah. Yeah. And he's Joe dead. Hmm? He's probably dead. Yeah, he is dead. Ooh. All right, cool. Died in like 2007 or something. Uh, Did you ever see later. that the last interview with him? It was weird. He was like, well, I'm going to live another 20 years, so it's fine. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Everyone always thinks that they're going to live like, they're they're always comfortable like, yeah, I don't, I'd be okay living 20 more years, but I have 20 more years. <laughs> Everyone always thinks that. Yeah. Like, if I could interview Regis Philbin the day before he died, how much do you want to bet he would be like, I'm going to yeah! live to be a million years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a um, the WTF podcast with Robin Williams is similarly eerie. Yeah, because they like talk about suicide. Oh, it's like, oh. oh, this sucks. Yeah, he died by suicide, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. If he died by like elephant or something like that, I'd feel silly. He died by, by elephant. elephant. Oh, uh, on on this train though, I also want to say like I don't ever use the R word. Like that was like, <laughs> that was like the one time I used it, and it was really for a joke. It was really for like a laugh among friends that would not yeah. like judge you exploit or like yeah. bring it up on or, a podcast in public. You. Yeah, or no, I, you. I I purposely brought it up. I did that because oh, yeah, I also did. because I also like don't want that to become a regular thing in my vernacular. I want to I want to make sure that I'm holding myself accountable. Yeah. Uh, for the things I say, and uh, if they hurt people or offend people, I do not want that. Yeah. No, that that uh, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's always good to communicate that sort of shit in improv, even if it's shitty online. Oh my god. Okay. So. Ugh. Uh, so in February, Drew and I, this month, of course, February, ha ha, uh, <laughs> shut up, uh, Drew and What's I- What's so funny about that? Why are you laughing? Uh, I'm specifically inserting a ha 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 out of nervousness. <laughs> it's either this or I shit. Anyway. <laughs> oh I should, I fard. 
<laughs> Editor me, edit five seconds of silence after that. <laughs> What, what's wrong, guys? <laughs> Don't you get it? <laughs> oh, that's gonna show up silence. This is gonna show up so good. Why did I never have that idea until now? <laughs> just if a any of our jokes is stupid, I just like add 10 seconds of silence. <laughs> Well, so, like, we don't hear you saying that bef until, like, after we hear the yeah, end. that's true, yeah. yeah that's hilarious. Uh, Some solemn cave sounds. Yeah. Uh, all right, Drew. What were you getting so excited about? Yeah, Drew. Uh, that's my name. Your homophobia aside, uh, <laughs> yeah. I really like hanging out with you because you're, you're a man who's willing to go, you know what, this is my opinion on this and fuck you, <laughs> whenever you're okay with it. Because we were in an online improv jam together recently in the Lord of Our Year oh, February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2021. Uh, <laughs> the Lord of our year, February. Yeah, Michael yeah. Scorsese. Uh, it was it was like a sort of a reunion of a of a university. Luke was there too. Yeah. Uh, Daryl went to a different university, so uh, despite me asking if Daryl could come, the people said no. Uh, which, by the way, I'm not joking. I asked like, "Hey, Daryl is part of our troop." I don't suppose, and the, they went like, "I can understand the sentiment, but like, he's part of a different university. It's specifically for our alumni. It might be weird." You're I don't want to be part of an, an online jam. <laughs> I mean, we're get, yeah, that. we're getting to that. <laughs> so, so like the online improv. Okay, drawing down the curtain. It sucks. It's terrible. It's not funny, and I hate it. Yes. <laughs> so Every like, as somebody who does like D and D online all the time, it is so much worse than in person. Yes. Like having to wait for responses and like tech issues, anything, you can't even get up and do anything physically, it's just, it's not the same. It's Any, not even close. Anything involving voice. And if you don't believe us, check out episode Who the Fuck Cares, uh, the underwears they are changing, which I maintain is probably our worst episode, maybe apart from the pilot, just <laughs> because, like, it's so very, like, the, the pacing is all jumbled, and it's just like, joke. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> I should, I fart. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good line, isn't it? <laughs> Highlight of the episode for sure. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. I can't name the episode that. That's the only unfortunate part. Why not? Just add D's to the end of it. <laughs> It'll be weird. <laughs> Just add a couple of D's. No one will know this. <laughs> Much like threesomes, am I right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. A couple Dink. of these. Anyway. These nuts. Uh, <laughs> a couple of these nuts. That's just a twosome. <laughs> Unless they only have one ball. <laughs> You don't know. Two people. Two one men, ball. one ball. <laughs> they Boy. share a ball. That's getting less and that's less. Like, that's like yeah. That's, that's like a, you. You're a, having a rundown of like three balls. <laughs> anyway, a deficit of three balls, I should say. <laughs> There's a deficit of three balls. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, as the president of your United States, of, can you imagine if like Bernie was president and he was like, for every two men, we're running a deficit. Of three balls. <laughs> However, if you look at the top one percent, each are you ready for this? Each person has seventeen balls. This is unacceptable. They can shoot sperm at catastrophic rates. <laughs> and I then like the sperm part, you sounded like a like a somebody at like a school like talking about like basketballs and stuff. That's what Bernie Sanders sounds like, my man. <laughs> yeah. Get involved in politics, Drew. <laughs> oh, can you imagine like a scandal like uh, Bernie walks away from the podium and you can see these creamed his shorts and like someone from the fucking like uh, the crowd is like, hang on, Bernie. What's with the f what's with that? How many looks balls like, do you have? Yeah, it looks like you got a lot of sperm in those balls, this is, Bernie. This is the DSA president. <laughs> It's AOC. <laughs> hey, good, Bernie. Bernie. Why is AOC turning on Bernie? Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> and she has that voice. Hey, good. Hey. <laughs> and the world's greatest congresswoman. <laughs> <laughs> we need to pass the Green New Deal. But first, we have to vote for Nancy Pelosi. And second of all, we need to check Bernie's balls sick. <laughs> this is getting mean. I count six balls. <laughs> Mr. Six Sanders. years. Drop your pants! <laughs> Tear down! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway. Tear down this point! <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Drew, Luke, and I were part of uh, an online improv jam, and we were doing maybe, like, the intro game, which was, like, it was cutesy for, like, online improv. It was, like, pass a piece of paper around and be like, oh, the piece of paper says this. To be honest, I don't get how it, like, develops good improv, because, like, the next person has to be like, it doesn't say this, it says this, and it's like, yeah, that's not, it's not building on offers. <laughs> 
It would have been yeah. cool if it was like a book where it was like, oh, dang, this next page is in Swahili. I need Luke to help me read this. And then Luke grabs it and he's all like... Oh, it, it, this is pretty ancient Swahili, but from what my recollection, um, it says, uh, you suck. How would you pass that to someone else? I'm trying to do like an ex a demonstration here. Oh, it says you suck, but I can't read the next word. Uh, Drew, can you help me out? And, yes, then, and then uh, Drew would say... Oh, yes, I am a master of Swahili, both ancient and current. Oh, um, yes. It says, you suck, Daryl. Uh, Daryl, how do you feel about this text? Oh, yes. This, see, uh, reading it, though, uh, it, it, the spelling of Daryl is the wrong spelling, so that's not me. It's actually the sun god, Darul. And scene. <laughs> I love the yeah. stereo in that scene, too. Yeah, that was the, nice. The people on the bus are like, who the fuck is talking? <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to listen to Credit Zero in surround sound mode. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll kill your dad. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. I should, I fart. Every time there's a small silence, I'm going to insert I should, I fart. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> But I'm gonna, in that one particularly, I'm gonna make it like really quiet so you can barely hear. Oh shit. I fart. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be the weirdest episode to come out, man. So no, uh, anyway. I'm glad I'm back. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, Drew, he could identify that, like, even the one we did that we did in person, the Swahili shit, yeah. was more entertaining and more of substance than what we did online. Drew, credit where credit is due, he. He can't put up a facade like that. If da I think, Dur if this is fair to say, if you're not enjoying something, you are really bad at, show at like showing long-term, no, really, I do care about it this thing. It depends on the context. If I'm getting paid for it, I can pretend like I'm enjoying it. That's fair. some work, but... bread involved. Yeah, yeah, but otherwise... But otherwise, if I have no reason to care, I'm not going to pretend to care. Yeah, yeah, I I'd say that's pretty accurate. So, Drew, <laughs> fucking, after the warm-up game, after, like, the presidents were like, okay, we'll do this person in this game, these people in this game, Drew was like, oh, sorry, I gotta dip, everybody. Bye. Maybe <laughs> ten minutes into the... No, 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 no. This is, like, During ten minutes... Shut up. This is ten minutes into, the, like, the, like, actual improv portion. Like, we did everyone's names, went around. It took way too long. We did ten minutes of God, improv. It took so long. And Drew was just like, oh, man, I am beat. I, I got work tomorrow. <laughs> and, like, it was really clear that, like, Drew would have stayed if it was more entertaining and he was just like you know I'm happy you guys are doing this online alumni improv show have fun bye click to be fair to be fair to be fair I should I fired to be fair yeah it's okay I already cut out your to be fair and replaced with I should I fired cool. <laughs> to be fair um, you offered to play a video game online before I even thought about leaving I do that often. What do you mean I offer to play a video game online? In a, in a, like a little side private chat. You're like, hey, we should... Uh, oh, yeah. Do you have any games you want to play while this stuff is going on? Yeah, while this stuff is going on. I was thinking, yeah, uh, you never took me up on that. I tried, but you didn't have the game I had. What game was it again? I wanted to play Badlands. Badlands? <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons bullied as a kid version. Yeah, of course I didn't have it. I'm cool. I mean, it's basically <laughs> Flappy Bird, but yeah. <laughs> Let's play Badlands. I found a copy of it in the locker that I was stuffed in. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky day for me. Oh, man. I, and I just imagine, like, the guy's, like, the jock who he's talking to is like, well, that's stealing! And then you get sent, <laughs> the nerd gets sent to the principal's office. The principal, like, whoops his ass before even asking him why he's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I grew up. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course that's how you grew up. Your fucking high school is Mad Max. Yeah. yeah. You're sending people to other dimensions. What? Wait. Was your... No, wait. Your middle school is Mad Max. Your high school is relatively normal. Because I think I kept asking about high school stories, and you kept going like, Why are we asking about middle school stories? I nuked a country when I was in middle school, but I didn't even go to my high school. Or something like that. I didn't pay attention. Yeah. I mean, sure. That's, that's what I said. Yeah. That's what I said. My middle school was very eventful, okay. But, like, you know, my high school, had, there were some things. What was the craziest thing? Go. Uh, I lit a slide on fire. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, all right, proceed. <laughs> I peed on a slide once, but that was about it. 
No, wait, did I? No, someone else did. I was just naked on it. Go on. Okay, so, uh, I hope, did I don't know. Did you slide down in there? Never mind. Yeah, it, it hurt. It was like, bum, 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 against, like, my hey, bare water skin. Slide. Oh, hooting and hollering and sliding on my, my ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... I hope there's a statute of limitations on this, but uh, <laughs> whatever. The slide doesn't even exist anymore. It's a different. Yeah, no plus, kidding. You burned it to the ground. Plus, yeah. it was over 12 years ago, and I believe, at least in American law, I don't know if this extends to Canada, but like, if you confess to a crime you did 12 years ago, you can't get like. Yeah, that's it. that's what statute of limitations. Yeah. I should. I fired. Anyway, so 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 I had a friend who was. I didn't uh, know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had a friend who was. Um, I don't know. He, he like. He was doing a lot of drinking. Let's say that you know he was, he was going through some what, personal alcohol. Issues. Alcohol. Oh no! And, oh uh, no! Underage drinking. But oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he he had this great idea because he was in this sort of like fuck the world kind of thing. You know, we all go through those phases alcohol, in high school. I get it. Yeah. 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 Alcohol. And alcohol makes you do stupid things as well. And so, uh, for a dumbass who's like never gotten drunk before, unless he was like five, which I've already talked about on the podcast before, mm-hmm. what is getting drunk like? Just to paint me a picture. Oh, okay. Uh, so getting drunk is sort of like the most naive question of all. I get that, but like in terms of like how it's relevant to this story, like what does a woman feel like? Oh, it's great. <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I'm like being inside and not being her. Either one. I can't report on the second one. Okay, Go on, cool. Daryl. Okay, yeah. Um, so, cool. Uh, but whatever you said there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, great, okay, uh, awesome. Uh, I felt women. <laughs> oh, women. <laughs> Three, two, one. Women. Uh, anyways. So this guy had this great idea when he was uh, drinking to make a Molotov cocktail, or a Molotov cocktail. A Molotov cocktail? Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail. He wanted to make a Molotov cocktail, you know what I'm saying? Not just one. A Molotov cocktail. <laughs> it's Russian. It's... No, it's, uh, you're doing it like it's Italian, though. You're like, it's a Molotov cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Come yeah. on. Oh, you know the, I what's I'm drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Got War? the toilet paper. Yeah, yeah what's his face? Part of Stalin's. Yeah, Gorbachev, yeah, exactly. No, no. Were you telling a story? Yeah. Okay, go on. Oh, so anyways, uh... he wanted to make a Molotov cocktail. Uh, oh, now I understand. But, but he had no idea how to make it. He had this book. <laughs> he had like a stone <laughs> and a book. <laughs> sort of, yeah. He had this book <laughs> what? called the uh, Anarchist Cookbook. Uh, yeah, you'll get arrested for that, yeah. Now, now you will. Yeah. But at the time... You get arrested you know, for owning it? Yeah. yeah. Really? Because it shows you how to like, make bombs and stuff. But like owning it, like you're never going to do anything with it. You can't get arrested for having a copy of Lolita, but that's like depictions of child... Uh, well, that's like, there's like an art like... Board. Drew's eyes lit up when I said that, and I was really <laughs> concerned. That's not true. It's the like, one person on the podcast that's endorsed... Never mind, go on. Yeah. <laughs> but you can... I know in the US you can get put on a list if you have Mein Kampf. Or like you can, and like uh, Drew, put your bone. Or like right. if you're if you're uh, indicted for like domestic. Every time violence. we're talking about mind comp, Drew. Okay, yeah, yeah, just let it, it out. <laughs> or you can you, you can somewhere. get in, you can get indicted. You, you're uh, easier to get indicted of domestic terrorism if you own a copy of the Turner Diaries. Anyway, anarchist cookbook. Okay, yeah. So he thought uh, that reading this book, he would find all the answers he needed for his cocktail, but they didn't have it. So I mean, or whatever, he did, couldn't read the recipe properly. And so he just put a bunch of flammable stuff in a bottle. You know, we, we had some alcohol. He had some, like, fire starter. You know, I don't know what it was. Like the little cake things? Yeah, those little cake things. He, like, <laughs> broke it up and put it, stuffed it those in the bottle. Those so long to burn. Yeah, I was about to say, those are for starting long-standing fires. Not like, boom, the hay is on fire, kind of like throw a Molotov cocktail yeah, thing. So he's mixing this all together with butane, right? So all of this stuff is in there. Yeah? What's butane? It's like, it's just gasoline. Lighter okay, cool. fluid, yeah. Uh, and so uh, and so he put a rag at the end of it, like apparently you're supposed to do. Yeah. And then he lit the rag. And then so he's like, all right, I'm going to light the rag and I'm going to throw it. And then we're all, maybe a group of us, two or three of us, we're like, okay, sure. Wait, how old is he again? He's a, we're in high school, maybe he's 15, 16, something like that. Why? Hell, <laughs> what does he yeah. get from it? I don't know. He was just in that rebellious stage, you that's know. A, that's a badass fifteen that year old re- at the anarchist cookbook. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That rebellious stage where he made and threw a Molotov cocktail with the intent of setting private property on fire. 
Yeah. That stage. I mean, We've he, all been there, he right, guys? made a guys? simple bomb. It That's was a slide. slide. Come on, guys. It was just He a made an slide. IUD. It, you know what it is? It's a slippery <laughs> slope. Hey. hey. An I, sorry, an IED. Not an IUD. No, not an IUD, no. You don't, you don't stick it up. He here. shoved the Molotov cocktail up his pussy. He was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after the cocktail, he was not. <laughs> so did it explode? Uh, so no, he threw the, the thing and it didn't explode right away. Uh, or it didn't explode at all. And the rag well, then was... You, the first start statement is true then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, but the rag... Right or in five years. The rag was still lit. You know, so so the Fam. rag was still on fire or whatever. <laughs> and fan. so the rag had That's come... That's savage. The rag... in, insert another I shit, I fart, followed by <laughs> five seconds of silence. <laughs> I said I fired. <laughs> oh man, this, this podcast is going to be excruciatingly long. <laughs> uh, and so so the rag had come Half out. Half of it is the silence followed by a <laughs> shit I fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so the rag had come out. It was on the slide burning, but the bottle was still full of this stuff. And so, you know, they kept on like throwing it at the fire, hoping like, you know, it would just like mushroom cloud. And Wait, then... is it not a glass bottle? Like it didn't break? It didn't break, no. It just kind of bounced oh, around. That's so yeah, cool. it, just, it just bounced around and like he threw it on, you know, it hit the grass, it hit the slide, but it wouldn't break. And so everybody was like, oh, God no. damn it. <laughs> there was like, I don't know what we do here. And so like I grabbed the bottle, like by the neck of the bottle, and I just smashed it over the rag. And yeah, that burned it all, right? <laughs> <laughs> all that flammable stuff in that oh, bottle no. just exploded up the the slide. Did you get a burn? No, no, I didn't. It was it was going in the direction up the slide, so it was going away from me. Was the guy behind you when this happened? Yeah, just everybody was behind me. <laughs> <laughs> One of them was in front of me. Uh, the slide. And and yeah, the whole slide would just took like it was all like explosive. And the, the slide didn't have any. Um... Did anyone gasp? Yeah. Yeah. A did 15, anyone? A fifteen-year-old that made an IED gasped. Did Did anyone get he like turned gasped. on? I don't know. Okay, go on. Did you uh, inspect them? No. Uh, but uh, like concurrently, as you're trying to light the fire, like <laughs> bring your penis over here. It was pretty remarkable because the slide had zero flammable material. Zero. What was the slide made of? It was a metal slide. Oh, it was metal. a metal slide. It was a metal oh, slide. Oh, you don't want to burn that. It's gonna like leave permanent marks. Uh, I did, yeah. <laughs> I'm clairvoyant. <laughs> <laughs> Permanent marks by zero books. Well, that means that people are going to know. They're going to be like, all right, who owns a copy of the Anarchist Cook? Is that why it's, like, illegal now? Because, like, too many burns on slides were detected, and they were like, we need to nip this in the bud. No, it's more like people make bobs and blow buildings up. <laughs> did Was you say oh, nip it in the bud? Yeah. Oh. That's a phrase. Yeah. yeah, you nip it in the bud, like the bud of a plant. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daryl. Right. Springtime. May Wait, did you not know the phrase, or were you just astonished that somebody used it because it's such an old man phrase? No, no, no. I'm, I'm As just, you've criticized just... me for before. Yeah, <laughs> criticize these nuts. The two things you've said the most about, like, the podcast consistently is, everyone makes fun of me because I'm old, I'm Daryl Dean, and wow, Paul, those, those fucking idioms you use are so old, I'm Daryl Dean. <laughs> No, I, I'm just. Meanwhile, I, you say I shit, I fart. You're the youngest <laughs> guy out of all of us. <laughs> I just, I've, I've never heard somebody use it correctly. Usually, it's like, oh, nip it in the butt. Yeah, oh, a lot of people true. say that, yeah, and it's wrong. Yeah. I apologize for like my entire two-minute rant. Go on. <laughs> uh, so where was I? Yeah, so the slide was like basically completely on fire, and somebody who had their backyard facing the park that we were in uh, totally saw us. And that slide on fire, and we uh, we saw her on the phone like, oh, you know, from yeah, the window. Did, we heard oh, a bunch of clanging from outside. Wait, she was <laughs> inside the window of like the school or something like that? No, no, it was her own house. Her, her own it house, was her backyard. Did you like throw a rock through the house and were you like, you saw nothing? <laughs> Little I have the actually. anarchist cookbook. Yeah, I, I know where you live. Yes, I I didn't say that, but I I was scared. Do you threw a rock? Was, well, no wonder you, you, you were scared. You burnt fire to a... You set fire to a slide, and then you threw a rock in someone's window. Can you actually burn fire? I wonder. You didn't no. actually throw a rock through something. Did you confirm can that? You cook no. fire? Okay. <laughs> no. Can you... You can cook fire. You can cook fire? Yeah, if you freeze it first. When is it's fire really ready to eat? <laughs> What? When is fire ready to eat? You have to freeze it first, then you cook it, and if it's not, if it's like material, you're good. Can you flash freeze it, or does it have to be like a slow freeze? It has to be a slow freeze. Oh. That's why it's not packaged up it's, and so Wait, on. it's either you have to flash freeze it or you can't flash freeze it. I always get those two mixed up. I feel like up. that's a very important distinction. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. 
Go on. Okay, okay I'm at the finish line here. Okay, guys, this is the end of the story. Yeah, we're holding you with a bungee cord. <laughs> we keep interrupt. Well, I keep interrupting you every time with your stories. Go no, on. we do too. So this lady called the police. I guess the fire department. My and what's it? She yeah. And we all bolted, and we saw That's like right. three or four fire trucks like in the distance. Is that what that movie's based off of? Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> the one I don't know. Dog. Yeah. I've never seen it. Probably. <laughs> Miley Cyrus is a fast dog. Why the fuck? Loosely based off of a bunch of teenagers making a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck made you think of that movie? It hasn't been relevant ever. It, the, he said the word Stop bolt. bumping the tripod. No, I'm bumping this. I saw this move. Oh, okay. Um, it made me think of it because he said the word bolt, and that's the title of the movie. He said bolted. Yeah, and the title of the movie's in that word. <laughs> you are correct, but it's just such a fucking, like, irrelevant to everything movie. Yeah. The most relevant thing I know about Bolt is that my friend, I think it, this was Riley, uh, shared me, like, Rule 34 of Bolt whenever I was <laughs> oh. in a bad mood because oh. he knew that I would at least laugh out of shock. <laughs> and it was always the dog fucking the girl. What? And I was, like, I was always disgusted, but I w he, he would, like, show me on his phone, I would always be like, Fuck! Jesus! Like, that sort of thing. And be like... There, see you laugh. Don't you feel better? <laughs> I was like, he had like a voice like, I can actually, I actually have someone I can re uh, relate the voice to at this point. Does anyone know of the uh, streamer Corpse Husband? Yeah. Yeah, he's famous for having like a really low voice. Yeah. So I want to, I want this to be like, I, I do not want to understate this. Riley's voice was basically identical to that of him, except he was like, he was 19 when he died, so I knew him for like the majority of my life when he was younger than 18 and he had and that he had voice. had that voice as like a young teen. Yeah, well not as a young teen, but like around when he was like 15 and older. Okay, so like high school, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that fucking That's insane? A, I, I underestimated how deep the voice was when you initially described it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was absolutely insane. And like I said, to couple that with the fact that he always had a blank expression, <clears throat> and like he had the driest sense of humor on the planet, and you never knew, like you had to spend two full years around it before you knew when to laugh. I think I'd be afraid of this guy. No, I, I think you should be. <laughs> Arguably, he was very toxic to me, and like, you know, nobody's perfect and all that, but also like... It was also really weird because, like, he would have the same energy that uh, we would have mm -hmm. when... Did you finish your story? Yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure. <laughs> I didn't want to make sure there was, like, any other details or so anything. Yeah, I remember they bolted and then they wrote the movie. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, fucking... Yeah, he would have the same energy as us, but sporadically. Mm -hmm. So, there would be one point... I think I've mentioned a couple of the stories on the, the podcast before, but, like, there would be uh, points when he'd, like... He and I would walk into a bar that looks like it came straight out of, like, the 1920s, and he would go, like, hey, watch this, and walk out, and then walk back in going, the war's over, see? <laughs> 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 and, like, like, everyone would look up at him as if he's like, you fucking idiot, and you are a fucking idiot too, person who's beside him, because you're associating with him, and I'd be like, oh my god. Like, this is the same guy that, um... Okay, in the first episode of this very podcast, I, I said to you, I'm guessing you've never had a gun pointed at your head. Yeah. Do you want that story? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we were in Hamilton. I was thinking about that today. Weird. Really? Yes. Oh. You were you were at wondering that, like what could that possibly be? I was thinking like I re just remembered you saying I'm no. guessing Luke you haven't had a gun pointed to your head. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the main activity Riley and I would do when we didn't have anything structured to do was we would walk around Hamilton, Ontario, based Hamilton, Ontario, <laughs> uh, just walking along the streets, just finding like cool buildings or cool things to look at and shit like that. Uh, dude loved lighthouses, so sometimes we went to St. Catharines and stuff like that because there's a surprising amount of lighthouses there. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, we would be in fucking Hamilton, and, um, sometimes he would find joggers, and he would start running behind them, but running with, like, the face of death, like a face of panic, and, like, really making sure to, like, hit his, uh, feet loudly on the sidewalk, and when they turn around to basically go, like, who the hell, he'd be like, NO, KEEP RUNNING! <laughs> <laughs> and he'd either freak them the fuck out, or they'd just stop, and... <laughs> There was one moment, I don't know if this is what he did, because I was, like, he was running. I was just staying put because I was like, fuck this guy. But <laughs> he had, like, someone stopped and was like, what What are you doing, man? Like, kind of like, he did the, the power donut fucking treatment. Yeah, from the, just think of that. Ditch. Get the fuck out of here, guys. Yeah, yeah, he did the, what are you doing here, man? Probably the same guy. Anyway, uh, yeah, the guy stopped jogging and was like, I could see him, like, doing that. Uh, to Riley, and according to Riley, he said, gotcha, and he booped him on the nose. I saw that happen, and walked calmly back to me. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. 
Riley was not afraid of death. There was, okay, so here's the gun moment. So there was one time when, this was at uh, like an evening or night or something like that, and there was some sort of like, I don't want to say gang dispute because that sounds too ter stereotypical, but there were a bunch of kids who thought they were really cool, and like, two of them had guns out and shit like that. And like, this was fresh from when this was happening. So there was no like police clearing the area or anything like that. This is just people yelling at things. And Riley, I shit you not, he turned to me. I don't remember what he said, but he said something along the lines of, this looks interesting. Walks into it and goes, all right, gentlemen, what's up? <laughs> oh my God. And of course, the guys are not fucking amused. Mm -hmm. And so they like point the gun at Riley and just like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Do you think this is your fucking problem, man? Like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they saw that I came here with him. I was trying to back the fuck away. I was a coward. I'm ready to say I would have left Riley there because yeah. he engaged them and Just I did not. A dumpster. Or yeah, something. I would have done that. I'm sorry that you're dying and I'm not, but I'm protecting myself. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sort of situation. But no, they saw me and was like, "No, you get the fuck back here too." And one of them straight up pointed his gun at my head and was like, "You think this is funny? You want to fucking die?" <laughs> like he was yelling like that. Jesus. And you think. You think when that happens, the first thing to run through your mind is like immediate fear. Like, oh fuck, I'm so sorry. Like panic and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you should. Maybe I farred. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's like the second, that's like the second thing that runs through your head. The first thing, and I'd say this lasted for the first like five seconds. No, I see you proud of yourself. <laughs> Can you put a silence after that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> But only after I shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. The um, two-hour podcast yeah. of silence. <laughs> it's avant-garde. Uh, anyway, the first thing that happens, and it lasts for the first five seconds, is this weird feeling of, oh, wow. This is what it's like to feel like everything could end. This is weird. And it's so bizarre. You'd think that, like, complete fear and, like, no, I don't want to lose my life. But, like... There's this weird moment of realization, because the first time that, like, this is why I say I'm guessing you've, quote, never had a gun pointed at your head, because I feel like this is a universal thing. The first time you feel your life is genuinely in danger, you feel this awe, this weird sense of awe, like, this could really be it. And you feel, like, almost weirdly fascinated with it. Like you understand morality that much more. Or not morality, yeah. sorry, mortality. You know what, that's a, that's a very good uh, that's a very good way to put it, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. like, I, I didn't know what it was that went through me. I felt like I should have been panicking, but I was like, oh my god, things will never be the same if he pulls the trigger. Which sounds like such a stupid statement to say, right. yeah. but it was, like, so fucking true to me in that moment. And, yeah, after that I panicked, and I was super mad at Riley for, like, two full weeks, which is not common because he, normally he held all the power in the relationship. Again, probably very toxic friendship in hindsight, but, like, yeah, that was, like, the one time that, like, A, I was mad at him for a prolonged period of time, and B, he actually seemed to, like, actually have remorse for that sort of thing, because normally he was sort of like a, uh... Uh, if it bothers you, I won't do it in the future, but it's your choice if you want to stay mad at me. It's not my problem. Like, he sort of had that kind of approach to everything. But how did this resolve? How did this this moment resolve? How did you get out of it? Mm. Oh, um, it Please. was just sort of like, yeah, it was, honestly, honest to God, it was basically a, like, a, this isn't your fucking problem, man. Like, it was just sort of like, it wasn't like, we'll let you go, but I want you to listen. No, this was just like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? You think this is funny? You want to fucking turn the back around the other fucking way? And just like, they just yelled at us for a little bit. And then just sort of like, we were just sort of like, we'll go, we'll go. Uh, I think that was what Riley said. He was just eventually like, all right, we'll go, we'll go. I just wanted to talk. And he was like, there's nothing to fucking talk about, man. You can't just do this to other people, man. Like, they were, if anything, Riley almost seemed to solve their problems because they seemed to both bond over <laughs> what the fuck are these two idiots <laughs> doing over here? Why, so... What was the context that they had guns? Did they just bring it to school? No, it was it was like an alleyway or something like that. Oh, uh, okay. I thought they I never, were like kids that brought it to school. I never found out the context. They were already yelling at each other when Riley and I showed up. In fact, that's what drew us to them. Hmm. And uh, we were, uh, Riley was just like, fuck yeah, I'm getting involved in this. And um, What a weird response to seeing that situation go down. Riley didn't fear a goddamn thing. Really? He would have jumped in front of a train if he thought there was a penny there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. At one point, he really wanted to do the whole um, I want to lay down while a train is going over me thing, but he put a piece of wood that he estimated was his height when he was lying down uh, under a train at one point. And it got destroyed. It got mangled, and he was like, 
All right, so I've learned that <laughs> maybe it would be a bad idea if I did this. <laughs> <laughs> learned what the rest of us already knew. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah, that's that's my story of how I got a gun pointed in my head. It, I wish I could sensationalize it more and be like, yeah, and they told us this, and then Riley solved their problems, or someone else got shot in the head. Something interesting, but and no. And then I took their guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I shot them. <laughs> uh, but no, it was largely just, we found a group of people yelling and pointing guns at them. Riley got involved. They yelled and pointed guns at us. And then you left. <laughs> yeah, and then we left. I should I fired. Um yeah, they they were yelling at us like until we were out of eye shot too. They were, they were like, you keep fucking walking! You think you're fucking funny? You think you're fucking funny? You're not fucking funny! Like, that sort of shit. Whoa. And then finally when you leave, like, okay, finally, let's take off our pants. Yeah, they were like, man, that guy was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like a secret circle jerk. But yeah. you can't let anybody know that the, that's what they're doing. The guns are a cover-up. <laughs> oh, I thought the guns were to, like, heighten the excitement. The guns were oh. actually their dicks. They were just pointing their dicks. <laughs> you think you're fucking funny? <laughs> I'm ready to shoot one off in five minutes. <laughs> five minutes? Okay. <laughs> this guy. I've been edging. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> this is a gross conversation. <laughs> Not out of character, but yeah. Yeah, no, that is fair. Anything else cool happen to anybody in this uh, fucking February? In February? I don't know. Oh! Um, I fucking keep talking. I have Christmas presents for two of you. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. That was nice. That was really fuck Luke. He's I mean, an idiot. Seriously, he's a, can't this say may that. be the only time he's left the podcast not to shit. We don't know yeah. that. He could be giving us his poop as presents. Oh, Here, let me go grab oof. your presents. Let me go grab your presents, and then he's just like, "Oh man, I hope I don't. I don't get the bloody one." Wait, I could clone my own Luke. I hope I get the bloody one. I want a little Luke. He could do my housework. A little, Luke. a little Luke. A little Luke. I feel like Luke is already a little Luke. Okay, if you could get a perfect clone of Luke that was like six inches tall, what would you do with him? Um, I I would get him to play with Durango because it would be amazing to see Durango chasing after little Luke I around the house. I feel like Durango might eat him. Durango's pretty well. I would have six to train inches. Durango. Like yeah, that's like six mouse. Is pretty small. C cats are natural predators, and like yeah, predators you can't really basically train them that much. Yeah. Predators don't discern, like, the only reason that uh, predators don't kill anything that's, like, smaller than them is because either it's so small that it's not worth their time, or uh, they're a clear danger. And a six-inch Luke would not be a clear danger. Maybe you'd have to, like, keep him in a box to keep him safe from the cat. Put Keep Luke in a box? Yeah. All right, what would you do with a six-inch tall Luke? Um, I would, uh... Perfect the, clone, by the way. I would put him Apart at, from the fact that he's six inches tall. I would put him at the top of my house and treat him like a gargoyle. So he would, he would like, watch over my house. No, I'm afraid of heights. No one would... <laughs> no, yeah, and not to mention he's six inches, so that would be incredible heights. He's yeah. six inches tall. It's like putting a fucking action figure on your roof. Why don't you just put an action figure yeah, on your roof? Yeah, but this action figure can, like, sneer and, like, make fun of people as they so walk So can by. most action figures of goblins. And there's action figures of gargoyles that are probably taller than six inches. Yeah, but he, oh. this mini Luke can make custom insults for people as they walk by. That, no one would hear him. He's six inches tall. That is that is so... That's such a fucking rad idea to put an action okay. figure on on your roof as a gargoyle. That is, I want to do you, that. Will, would you actually do that? That though? is so rad. I'll give you an old action figure of mine if you promise to affix it to your roof and send me a picture. Okay. All right, next next episode, I'll give it to you, and the episode after that, you'll report. Sure. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. I have Christmas presents for two. Drew, I saw during the Christmas season. Yes. So Liar! Wait, it's probably true. Go on. Yes, it is true. <laughs> so he's opened his already. But Paul and Daryl... I have a feeling we got the same thing. Yes. Can you guys describe um, what this looks like? It looks like a drink. Uh, it looks like you duct taped a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> paper, like, paper, like lined, lined paper, paper, like from school, to, to like a milkshake in a bottle. Okay, now you may open it. Oh, if it's lube, I'm gonna kill you. No, wait, it's too watery to be lube. Don't say what it is until I open mine. I'm oh, probably gonna be slower. Oh my god. Um, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, hold up. Did you get Darryl Drew the is same not thing? Thrilled. <laughs> did you get Drew the same thing? Yes, I did. Uh. Oh. Why'd you get us all goat's milk? <laughs> Not Legend just goat's milk. It's it's goat's milk for a legendary bubble bath? 
I was going to immediately drink this. I'm so glad he pointed that out. <laughs> I had the exact I was, same response. Yeah, I was going to just like drink it as a bit. Just like, thanks, I'll drink some of it now. Cool. No, it's soap. <laughs> it's goat's milk bubble, but it's pre-opened too. Who used this? No, no, it's not pre-opened. Who used this? <laughs> it's not pre-opened. The seal it's is like broken. That. It's like that. No, it, it had no seal. Yeah. It was like really easy to open. Yeah. Who used this? No one did. Someone could have spat in it. No Someone one did. Someone could have came in it. No one did. Same color. No one did. All right. I mean, can't. Mm. Not, not YouTube. What if I <laughs> wait? Yeah. Don't taste the bubble. Oh bath. God, it's terrible. Did you actually taste it? I don't like goat's milk to begin with. I'm not psycho for drinking goat's milk bubble bath. <laughs> Look up the DSM five, you fucking idiot. You, uh, you don't like goat's milk. Not in this form, it's gross. No, do you, you don't like goat's milk in general? Oh, um, it's okay, it's a bit rich. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it the smells a little too, too fragrant for me. This kind of reminds me of that one vine where um, it's like, hey, have you tried that new, and then they give like a soap product, and it was like, yeah, it tastes terrible. And he was like, wait, you, you drink shampoo? And the guy's like, uh, no, why would I drink it if it tastes terrible? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas. You. God Thank bless you, us, everyone. Have a bath. Do not drink it. <laughs> Polly, oh, you're no. going to regret it. Oh, it's salty. <laughs> so, uh, I want to wash your mouth out with soap. Already did it, Grandma. I do it for Already foot. did it, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you might have noticed that these gifts are... are... Aren't, aren't directed to us each, like, personally. Luke, do you want to explain why you got us all goat's milk? You did come in mine, didn't you? <laughs> no, uh, no, I didn't come it's in yours. <laughs> um, Pre-owned, you. No, I, um, no, because uh, it was a three-pack at Costco, and I was like, I know three people. <laughs> Cheap bastard. <laughs> but why this? Because uh, there's three of them. <laughs> but why this? There's three packs of everything at Costco. No. There's three packs of that at Costco. Yeah, you should have got us a three pack of TVs. Yeah, or yeah. like a uh, trail mix. TV there trail mix. There wasn't a three, three pack of trail mix at my Costco. I can guarantee if I we'll walk just, through a we'll Costco guarantee. for a long enough time, I guarantee, that's a C plus at least, <laughs> uh, that I would find three packs of other things at Costco that taste better than this. <laughs> well, it was near the cash, so I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was taking that. Well, I was lazy. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you for this gift. You're yes, welcome. thank you very much. You're welcome. I, I want to read this because it's... And now that you're not me. lactose intolerant anymore... You yeah, can bathe in I it. I can bathe in it. <laughs> Wait, can not, lactose intolerant people not bathe in milk products? I don't know. I've never. Do you just shit that. in a bath? Oh wait, we already had this conversation. Yeah, didn't we? we yeah. did. We did over the phone. <laughs> Legend has it Cleopatra took a milk bath every day. Still wondering about the secret behind her great beauty. We don't know. She's dead. We never saw her. Yeah, yeah. she could have looked horrible. We only know her bones. Which, which is weird, because, like, you think... nice-ass bone. Like, when you first hear about Marilyn Monroe, is actually a great example, because you hear about Marilyn Monroe, it's like, oh, man, that beauty. She apparently stank to high heaven, uh, rarely ever bathed, and, like, decided to put on cologne uh, before she went to bed, and she she slept naked, I don't care about that part, but had, like, food in the bed. Like, in the bed, and yeah. stuff like that. So she, she was like on food? Yeah, she fermented herself in the food. And it's like, I'm sure if she took a milk bath every day, good fucking for her, but, like, she stank. We now know that. Oh, yeah, so, she, like, she was not a stable person. <laughs> yeah, what if, what if Cleopatra, the famously brother-fucking stable person, <laughs> yeah. uh, what if she fucking smelled? She probably did. It was before deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> when before was de deodorant. It's in Egypt. It's hot. <laughs> when was deodorant invented? A, a year ago. Probably more. Oh, shit. <laughs> probably, I don't know if that's true, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they were like stone. <laughs> Good times. Thanks for the milk bath. I'll use. I'll never use it. I shower. Wait, can I use it in the shower? Can you I probably could. Thanks for showering me with your milk bath. Thanks for coming on me. I should. I fired. Wait, <laughs> I jumped the gun, Daryl. <laughs> Add five seconds of silence after the thanks for coming on me. Uh, to, all right. I want one last topic before we close things off. You yeah. mentioned in a previous podcast <laughs> that. <laughs> Deep breath. Oh, you're gonna make it through. Deep breath. <sighs> Daryl, do you, you mentioned a previous podcast <laughs> that you do like doing last three breaths. 
<laughs> You're like the cockroach guy in Men in Black. Yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Spoilers. Water. <laughs> I'll put my hands on my head. <laughs> oh, like this. Uh, anyway, you mentioned that you were you were, were interested in the stocks because you were interested in Wall Street bets. First of all, in the primal month of February, holy shit, has that blown up with the GameStop thing? Yeah. I got back into stocks thanks to that. I was a little bit late because like. You have to register for a couple of days and shit like that, and the GameStop bubble had already burst by then. I was basically like, oh well. It reminded me that I used to do stocks a lot when I was in fucking high school, which not a lot of high schoolers fucking do. You yeah. traded stocks in high school? Yeah. Wow. Uh, my uncle set up the account for me. He was like, you're going to need to learn this shit. And uh, the invisible part of that sentence is, if you want to be real fucking rich and <laughs> leave the fucking poors behind. Uh, or my be real fucking poor. My uncle is a rich man. Uh, for context. Anyway, yeah, so I used to do that, and then I just, like, stopped when I didn't have money in university, because I had to take money out of the stock account and basically, like, like bankrupt the stock account in order to pay fucking tuition. And now I'm just getting back into it going, like, right, I know this shit! So then, like, I bought a bunch of, like, ETFs and mutual funds, and I happened to buy Bitcoin the day before... Uh, Musk announced that he bought like 1.5 billion in Bitcoin so I like checked back I was like I invested $50 in Bitcoin what's it worth now? $100 okay sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah that works that's fine yeah exactly sounds good uh, are you a stocks man? Daryl uh, Dean like, like, uh, Daryl Dean I'm not investing because I don't have enough money but I'm following I'm definitely okay. following what's going on how much money you got? <laughs> tell us all your personal not finances. enough no like expendable just like if you made a purchase today that was this maximum value, you wouldn't regret it long term. A like sandwich. A, like a, yeah, uh, like a like a few hundred bucks. Cool. That's what I have in my account. You could get involved in the stocks. I could give you a couple ETFs that are like go up over time as long as it's not a huge recession or anything like that. Yeah. Because then it just sort of crashes and then goes back up. But like, yeah. The best way to do stocks is, uh, welcome to Financial Ar Arcade. We don't take responsibility if you lose all your fucking money. <laughs> I feel um, like that's a very important disclaimer when talking about the stock market. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking, uh, the best types of stock trading to do are not ones where you used to buy, sell, buy, sell every day. You look into, like, accounts that, like, clearly have an upward trend over the last, like, five-ish years and will go up with the economy. Mm. Uh, General Electric is one is a good one, GE. Uh, the SPY index is a great one because it bets on an entire industry as opposed to like one stock. Uh, I prefer SPY X because it's the uh, fossil fuel free one, which is probably going to go up a lot more than the other ones in the next couple of years. And I just sort of, I invested $300 uh, amidst like different stocks like that and then just backed away and I'll check back maybe next year. And if I'm running on financial hard times, I'll pull like a couple of stocks out of that. It'll still be worth more money by then. Good. That's that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. But, uh, for those that don't know, it's impossible for you not to know, I, I'd, I'd wager. But yeah, a lot of trolls uh, on Reddit uh, basically bought stock in uh, in GameStop and uh, made the short buyers... Buying short is basically when you're buying against a company. They made the uh, short buyers look bad, and so the stock started to surge uh, with the increased attention on it, and Wall Street got upset because it was basically like, only we're allowed to do this. <laughs> uh, that's the thing that gets me. They were getting mad at people for doing what Wall Street already fucking does. <clears throat> yeah. But it bothers the, Wall, the shit out of me. But Wall Street lost like a lot of money. Some hedge funds lost... Big, big oh fucking well, Melvin Capital. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a shit about Melvin Capital. This is what they profited off of to begin with. It should be a risk investment. It shouldn't be a guaranteed investment. Especially so when they... the nature of shorting a stock as well. Like that is the highest risk. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because you can lose indefinitely. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that you is can't true. be like, I'm gonna take this high risk stock. Oh, it didn't pay off. Sue them. Yeah, it's kind of weird how, like, if the poor lose their money, they're like, oh, well, that's the thing with the investments. Sometimes it doesn't work out. And then when, like, billionaire fucking hedge funds lose money, they're like, what? New York Stock Exchange, can you halt all trading for two hours while we sort out this mess? And then they agreed. Mm -hmm. yeah. That bothers the shit out of me. They literally paused, if you want to call, like, the stock exchange the economy, they paused the economy so that billionaires could get back on their feet. Yeah. How is that not the the most like the system is rigged thing <laughs> yeah. in the, on the fucking planet? Privatize the gains, socialize the losses. Gross! Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I threw my goat's milk. I should. I fard. 
<laughs> that was a good place to end. That oh, one, yeah. that one was natural. That one was natural. No, I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting that that one was natural. Uh, okay. Also, it would be really bad to end on a fucking silence, in my opinion, yeah, yeah, without yeah, like no, signing yeah, off yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anything else you, you want to say about uh, trading or anything like that? Because you brought it up initially. You follow Wall Street bets. Were there a lot of like R words and shit like that when it was blowing up on the Reddits? There was, and it's still there. Still are like now. Like I guess AMC Entertainment is the bigger thing now. She uh, hates Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Why do you think that AOC hates Bernie Sanders? Because he has six balls and that's corrupt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go on. Uh, yeah. He's so. supposed to be a socialist, but he has six balls. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, in, invest if you if you want to, uh, but just know that uh, that um, they're coming for you. <laughs> that the game is rigged. Yeah, you know, there's a big club. Yeah, and you're not in it. Yeah, but you can still make a, f- a few bucks off of your friends. Uh, Sell them. <laughs> Jesus. How do you think Bernie Sanders got his six balls? He had to get them from somebody. Y- human trafficking? Yeah. Do you think that he? Do you think that he was like snipping open the scrotums of his victims, just going, "I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain," like a fucking psychopath? Yeah. <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> So what, he cuts off the balls of other people and then sells it to himself? Yeah. Don't worry, it's just the bottom 2%. <laughs> <laughs> Can't only do it from billionaire hedge funds. I grab them, bring them into an alley, and cut off their testes. That would be great if, like, he got... <laughs> if he got, like, every, like, important person's balls and they couldn't even make public statements because they, they couldn't be like, We've got something <laughs> bad happened to all of us yesterday and we need to find out who did that would be so amazing if, like, every rich or powerful person on the planet suddenly had really high voices and Bernie Sanders was like, Oh, that's very unfortunate. And then, but there's like, wait, wait so, but, voice. that's yeah. very unfortunate. <laughs> it just sounds like rock. <laughs> oh, you know, Adrian, I got six balls. <laughs> the DNC is like, we have to condemn this kind of behavior. And it's like, no, you're, you're, you're impeding our chances of real change. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag the DNC has no balls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck it. Yeah, we cool out of here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of After School Arcade, the allegedly improv podcast from... Wait. Credits here, the allegedly improv podcast from After School Arcade. His name is... Luke. His name is... Daryl. His name is... Drew. My name is... Tweed. Bye. (laughs) Stop the thing. (laughs)